Let's talk about blood clots. The clotting that happens in the blood is both wanted and unwanted, depending on location. If you cut your skin, expose yourself, and you start bleeding, you want to not keep on bleeding. You want to stop the bleeding. And that's where blood clots are going to start forming right at the site where the blood is in contact with the air and the fibrosis or the fibrin that is actually known as the scar tissue is going to start forming right there at the site of the injury and cover it over and stop the bleeding. Mission accomplished. Now, should this happen at the wrong place, somewhere inside of your circulatory system, this is going to be known as the thrombus. As, and thrombosis is a process by which a clot that has gotten inside the system is floating through. And of course, in a larger vessel, a small clot is not a big deal. But at some point, that clot is going to arrive in a place where it gets stuck and plugs the vessel. Now, if this happens in your leg, you will have something known as the intermittent claudication, and you may have these pains in your legs because all of a sudden, some muscle, a part of your leg muscles, is getting deprived of oxygen. It hurts. Now, when this happens in your heart, all of a sudden, a part of your heart muscle is going to have less blood supply, which means less oxygen, and it's going to be deprived of oxygen, and it could die. And that's known as the infarction. Heart attack is what that is. Now, if this happens in your brain, a piece or part of your brain is deprived of oxygen, and when that happens, you end up with what's known as a stroke. Now, you can have ischemic stroke, which is transient, and it just happens for a little while, and then somehow it gets dislodged and, mm -hmm. and function returns, and nothing much happens. The consequence is transient and temporary. But if this is big enough of a clot and blocks big enough of a blood supply vessel, you end up with a stroke that's going to have a permanent damage. It could be something as hard as, as uh, making you unable to use half of your body. Now, why I'm talking about all of this, there's an antidote. The pharmaceutical antidote is called blood thinner. Primarily, they have been using warfarin, which is the same thing as used for uh, killing rats, rat poison. The way you kill the rat with this is when the rat eats enough warfarin, his uh, blood vessels become so permeable that he bleeds internally. That's how he dies, through bleeding. Now, if you are on the medical version of warfarin, you have to be monitored because, number one, you will have greater chance of bleeding continually if you cut, but also you will be bruising easily and you could, in fact, bleed internally. So this could be problematic. So it needs to be watched very carefully because this is a dangerous weapon. Now, there is an alternative, and the alternative is called NATO, N-A-T-T-O, and it's a natural enzyme that's derived from fermentation of soy. It's, it's a natural Japanese, call it del delicacy. Well, it's very much an acquired taste. It's sort of like aged cheeses. Some of them are really smelly and, uh, well, people like these sort of things, but it's intense. Natto has a very characteristic smell and very intense taste to it. And once you harvest the natto enzyme, the enzyme is called natto kinase, this enzyme 
is dissolving these fibrins, these clots, and it's preventing unwanted clotting without limiting the wanted clotting. So when you're on natokinase, you have no chance of bleeding to death when you cut yourself. And at the same time, you are preventing these blood clots from forming. So this is important because of, especially lately with the introduction of the um, venoms in uh, both the jabs and the uh, novel corona infections, we now have more of a tendency to have unwanted clotting in unusual locations. So being on a steady supply of natokinase is a wise thing. So what you want to do is train yourself to love natto. It's a smelly, smelly goo. Or you can get a natto kinase loaded enzyme. The one that I really like is called Natticor. And it's not just the natto by itself. It has several things. It includes natto kinase, also serapeptase, which is an enzyme that helps to dissolve the fibrin itself. And then it has a few more things like our lipoic acid and rutocide and uh, proteases, several types of proteases. Protease is a protein dissolving enzyme and um, a bit of zinc, which is important to help the immune system do this job. So Naticor is a very cost-effective way to keep your body from unwanted clotting. So if your body has the tendency to do that, then you definitely should put yourself on a steady supply of natokinase and enjoy life without worrying about the five major problems, claudication um, or um, strokes or heart attacks and just becoming very stiff everywhere. This enzyme is capable of keeping your blood vessels pliable well into the old age. So giving you flexibility and giving you ability to perform athletically well into your old age. Enjoy natokinase. It's a good thing.